Welcome back to Amashiroi Recap. Today, I will recap the Asterisk War. The story begins with a transfer student named Amajiri Ayato. On the first day of school, he finds a handkerchief belonging to a girl student. That's why he intended to return it. But instead, he saw that girl was changing clothes. Julie's thanks Ayato for returning the handkerchief, but she gets angry when Ayato sees her beautiful body. <laughs> Since Ayato managed to dodge her attack, Julie's challenged him to a duel. Julie's is ranked 5th at Seidokan Academy, so it's no wonder she has extraordinary abilities. Even so, Ayato was still able to overcome it. When Julie's launched her strongest attack, Ayato could slash the attack. <laughs> While the duel was in progress, someone wanted to kill Julie's, but Ayato managed to save her, and his hand touched something soft. Then someone stopped their duel. She is a student named Claudia who serves as student council president. Claudia took Ayato to the student council room to explain the school rules. Then Claudia explained a match between teams against other academies. The match was called a festa. Ayato was asked to participate because their school performance had started to decline. Ayato said he was not interested in that, because Ayato wanted to find his older sister named Amajiri Haruka. But Haruka's information as a student there has been erased by someone, and only the Ogre Lux weapon Sir Veresta that Haruka once used remains. Ayato was curious about the weapon and wanted to use it. After talking with Claudia, Ayato was placed in the same class as Julie's. Ayato befriends a student named Yabuki. He tells Ayato that Julie's is the princess of the European kingdom Lysultania. Not only that, but Julie's also always wins all the duels in the academy, thus making her rise to fifth rank. Then there was a ninth rank student named Lester. He always wanted to challenge Julie's, and it made Julie's annoyed with him. Ayato saw that incident, trying to calm them both down, so Lester immediately left. After discovering Julie's is the princess, Ayato asks her what her is fighting for. Julie's replied that to get the money. She would take part in the competition and win first place. However, due to her unfriendly nature, Julie's doesn't have a partner to participate in the match. Then Ayato asked Julie's to show him around the academy since he didn't know the environment of the academy yet. Feeling indebted to her, Julie's accepted the request. The next day Ayato meets his childhood friend named Sasami Asaya. During the break, Seiya wanted to take Ayato around the academy, but Julie's didn't want to leave Ayato to Seiya. In the end, they decided to go around the academy together. Julie's explained the academy facilities well. Then when Ayato went to buy a drink, suddenly someone attacked them both. <laughs> Julie's and Seiya overcame the attack but the perpetrator immediately disappeared without a trace. The next day Claudia and Ayato headed to the weapon's storage. Lester is also there and wants to try Sir Veresta's weapon. However, the match rate is only 32%. Because Lester kept trying to control it, the weapon went out of control. Ayato immediately calmed down the weapon. It was unexpected that the weapon had chosen Ayato as its master, so Ayato managed to get Sir Veresta which can cut everything. Ayato received an invitation from Claudia to come to her place. Claudia explained that the participants who were going to participate in the Phoenix Festa match had to withdraw because someone had attacked them. The case is the same as what Julie's experienced a few days ago. The disciplinary committee suspects Lester and Randy. Claudia asked Ayato always to accompany Julie's. If there was another attack by the perpetrator, Julie's might not be able to face it alone. Because Ayato accepted the request, Claudia wanted to give a gift to Ayato. <laughs> The next day Ayato and Julie's went for a walk around town. Lester and his friend suddenly came and challenged Julie's to a duel. Since they were making a fuss, Ayato immediately faced them with great courage. But his friends asked Lester not to fight in public, so they immediately left the place. After that, a group targeted Julie's, and even though many people surrounded them, Julie's could beat them alone. 
At the same time, Ayato didn't have time to avoid the attack because he was too focused on paying attention to Julius. The attack did not injure him, but his weapon was damaged, and his clothes were slightly torn. Julie's invites Ayato to stop by her place. She will sew Ayato's torn clothes and repair them. Julie's also confides in Ayato about her past. When she was child, she would often sneak out of the palace. But a group of bad people dragged her into the alley. Luckily the children from the orphanage came to help her. That's why Julie's wanted to repay their kindness by collecting lots of money so they could live in peace without any problems. The next day Julie's got a challenge letter from someone. Julie's decided to go to their place alone. Knowing that, Ayato immediately headed to Julie's place and brought Sir Veresta's weapon. When Julie's arrived somewhere, she was confronted by a student named Silas. Silas attacks Julie's and the other students to keep them from participating in the Phoenix Festa match. He did that because he was assisted by another academy called the Lincoln Academy. Not only that, but he also deceived Lester and used him to trap them both there. Silas used 128 dolls and managed to beat Lester and even corner Julie's. When Julie's was almost dead, Ayato came to save her. Ayato instantly unleashed his power. He cut down all the dolls, including the giant ones he easily destroyed. <laughs> Feeling unable to win, Silas intends to run away from there. Julie's uses her powers to allow Ayato to fly, so they defeat Silas. But suddenly, Ayato was unconscious because he had activated his power seal. It turns out that Ayato has a powerful power. That's why Haruka sealed Ayato's power when he was a child. After that, Ayato woke up in Julie's lap. Ayato explained that he could only use his power for 5 minutes. If he used his power for too long, Ayato would immediately faint. Since Julie still didn't have a partner for the Phoenix Festa match, Ayato was willing to become her partner for the match. Heard that made Julie's very happy, and their relationship had become closer. Representatives from each academy held a meeting to discuss the upcoming match. The representative of Alenkant Academy was named Sakan Shuma, and Jai Long Academy was named Fan Zinglu. Gerardworth Academy was named Ernest Fairclough, and La Wolf Black Academy was named Dirk Eberween. Sadaukan Academy was named Claudia Enfield, while one person was absent. <laughs> Apart from discussing the match, they also discussed Seidaukan Academy with Alenkant Academy, who had started working together to develop new weapons. Even though they had argued with each other, they were able to finish the meeting peacefully. On the other hand, Ayato accidentally bumped into a girl named Taudu Kirin. Because they have busyness, they do not have the opportunity to talk. After that, Ayato and Julie's prepared to participate in the Phoenix Festa. The exercise was aimed at training Ayato to be able to use his full strength for three minutes. <laughs> Claudia, with the students from Alekant Academy, came to the training ground. The mastermind of the previous incident was their doing. As compensation for the mess they've created, Claudia wants to gain their knowledge to create new weapons. The student was Ernesta with Camilla. Ernesta gave a gift to Ayato, who had succeeded in defeating all of her dolls. At the same time, Camilla wanted to fight Saya during the Phoenix Festa to prove the greatness of their weapons. When Ayato was walking around the academy, he saw Kirin being scolded by her uncle. Because his treatment was too much, Ayato decided to stop it. Ayato asks his uncle Kirin to promise not to commit violence again. He doesn't mind if Ayato can win the duel against Kirin, so they took the fight very seriously. Because it was almost five minutes of fighting, making Ayato too hasty. In the end Kirin won the duel. Ayato became exhausted after using his powers for too long. Then Julie's explained that the first rank was Kirin, and she only used an ordinary katana, but she has a powerful sword technique. While the second rank is Claudia, she has the power to see the future in a few seconds. The two of them were people Julie's and Ayato couldn't beat. Therefore they have to train again to become stronger. But before that, Ayato had to get a new badge. Ayato immediately went to see Claudia, who was relaxing in the pool. 
ところでこれどこから取り出したんだい<笑>秘密です Kirin waits for Ayato to return to his dormitory. She wants to thank Ayato for defending her from her uncle. The two of them look so familiar, especially when talking about swordsmanship. Since Kirin always trains alone, Ayato offers her to join the morning training together. However, they were attacked by a group of beasts, and even though Ayato had cut them, they could regenerate quickly. <laughs> Kirin manages to defeat it by destroying its core, but the place suddenly collapses and they fall into a waterway. They are dealing with a dragon that can regenerate. Ayato released his sealed power, and his sword became bigger. Ayato manages to defeat the dragon, but his power seal activates immediately and knocks him unconscious. After waking up, Ayato and Kirin dried their clothes and could only wait for the rescue team to help them. Ayato tells Kirin about his sealed power, which keeps him only fighting for five minutes. Then Kirin explained the reason why she went with her uncle. It was to save her father. Her father is considered a criminal because he killed a robber even though it was in self-defense to save Kirin. However, the police brand Kirin's father as a criminal and are imprisoned. Ayato says he will help Kirin and advises her not to obey her uncle's cruel orders anymore. Hearing that made Kirin more confident and want to be free and can do whatever she wanted. For starters, Kirin challenges Ayato to a duel. The battle began. Ayato used ordinary weapons against Kirin and even took turns using many weapons. <laughs> In the end, Kirin is defeated by Ayato, and Kirin wants to join in on training with Ayato and the others to participate in the Phoenix Festa competition. A few days later, Kirin and Seiya train together to participate in the Phoenix Festa match. Although their abilities are good, their cooperation as a team still has many shortcomings. Therefore Seiya invites Kirin to tour the city together to strengthen their bond. Seiya wanted to buy something for her father's birthday. He is a scientist who is crazy about guns. Therefore the two of them went to the black market to get rare illegal weapons. Seiya hopes these rare objects can help her father develop new weapons. Meanwhile, Kirin asked Seiya to teach her how to swim. While swimming, Kirin accidentally bumped into a student from another school. Kirin already apologized to her, but since that student won't forgive her, Seiya wants to teach her a lesson. So Seiya dueled with the girl, but Seiya easily beat her. After a day together, they started to understand each other, and their friendship became closer. So they trust each other, and cooperation in battle is getting better. On the other hand, at the Le Wolf Black Institute Academy, Dirk Eberween orders someone to take part in the Phoenix Festa match to kill Ayato during the match. The female student was named Irene Erzes. A few days later, Phoenix Festa is about to start, and the Festa Management Committee chairman named Medayath Mesa. He asked the disciples to fight with all their might, and use the most powerful weapons to win the match. The Phoenix Festa matches will last two weeks, and the first match will be Ayato alongside Julie's against Gerardworth Academy. Naturally, their appearance caused an uproar in the audience, because Ayato was ranked first in the academy, and Julie's was ranked fifth, as well as a princess. When the match started, the opposing team attacked from close range. Ayato released his powers and managed to defeat them. <coughs> In the next match, Alenkant Academy does not send human representatives but uses new combat robots with artificial intelligence. The robots are named Artie and Rimsey. At the same time, the robot's owner is Ernesto with Camilla. When the match started, Artie arrogantly gave his opponent time to attack and would not fight back for a minute. When his opponent attacks, Artie can create a powerful shield that they cannot destroy with normal attacks. Ultimately, the opponent ran out of time, and Artie defeated them with one hit. After watching the match, Ayato and the others admit that the robot is powerful. 
Saya got a call from her father. He sent a new weapon for Saya to use against Artie with Rimsey. After that, there was a commotion in the city. It turned out that Irene was fighting with a group of people. Even she wanted to fight with Ayato, who happened to be there. But when her younger sister named Priscilla came, Irene immediately became calmer and obeyed Priscilla's words. After apologizing, they immediately left from there. On the other hand, Kirin's match with Saya begins, and they immediately face their enemies at close range. Kirin can defeat her enemy in a short time. While Saya takes a little time to fill up the energy in her weapon. After collecting her weapon energy, she immediately deploys a deadly attack. So Saya and Kirin won the match. The next match was Ayato's turn with Julie's. Julie's fought her enemies alone and managed to defeat them. On the other hand, Irene is a team with her sister. Irene uses a weapon that allows her to control gravity. She can immobilize her opponent to unconsciousness. But she needs blood to use the power. Because Priscilla can regenerate so, Irene can continue to suck her blood. When Ayato was alone with Claudia, Claudia wanted to give a special gift to Ayato. But suddenly, there was a call from Kirin, who said that Seiya had lost one's way. Ayato immediately went to look for her. Then when Ayato was in an alley, he met Priscilla, chased by many people. Ayato had no other choice but to save her. At the same time, Irene came to the two of them. She was angry because she thought that Ayato had done something to Priscilla. After learning that Ayato had saved Priscilla, Irene promised not to be rude to Ayato again but they will face each other in the final match. Before that, Irene invited Ayato to eat together at her house. Irene also explained the reason and goal for her fight. Because she borrowed a massive amount of money, she had to pay it off by carrying out various orders. One of the orders given was to destroy Ayato. She leaked the information out of gratitude for Ayato saving her sister. At night, Ayato came to Claudia's place, but Claudia suddenly attacked Ayato. Fortunately, Ayato managed to wake her. Claudia explains that the weapon's side effects make the user repeatedly dream about death. But instead, Claudia can see the future. According to Claudia, a weapon with a personality can affect its user. That's why Irene looks like a different person when using her weapon. After knowing this, Ayato became even more careful when dealing with Irene in the final match. Bloxy's final match begins. Ayato immediately faces her from close range while Julie's deploys fire attacks while keeping her distance. Ayato's sword skills are superior to his opponent, but Irene can manipulate gravity and is very dangerous if Ayato is hit by her attack. They had a hard time fighting Arena. Even Irene was able to fill her strength by sucking Priscilla's blood. Irene launched an overwhelming number of attacks on Ayato, but Ayato managed to fend off all of the attacks. When Julius exerts her strongest attack, Irene uses all the strength of her weapon to protect herself, even though it could keep him going but relying on that excessive strength affected his consciousness. Irene forcefully sucked Priscilla's blood and recovered all her strength. Since Irene was completely controlled by her weapon, the only way Ayato could do it was to destroy the weapon with all his might. Ayato and Julie's managed to become victorious, but because Ayato used his strength for too long, his power seal became active and tormented his own body. In the end, people realized Ayato's weakness. They assumed that Ayato could only fight for five minutes. That would make it difficult for Ayato to fight against the other participants. That's why Ayato wanted to find a way to remove the seal to win the Phoenix Festa. On the other hand, Fan Zinglu was playing around with the students of Jialong Academy, but they were overwhelmed and couldn't catch Fan Zinglu. Fan Zinglu had seen Ayato's match before and felt attracted to Ayato, because the sealed power made her wonder how much Ayato's full strength was. Information about Ayato's weaknesses has spread to everyone, and Ayato still needs time to recover his strength, but they didn't give up at all. Their next match would be against Jialong Academy. They were skilled in close combat. If Ayato was in a perfect state, beating them should not be hard. Therefore Julie's prepared a new strategy to win against them. 
that Artie and Rimsey from Academy Elekans featured participants in the match. Dorothy Olemus and Elliot Forster from the Academy Galahadworth are knights who the strong and genius. Jai Long's twin demons, Lai Shenian and Lai Shenhua, fool all opponents in the match and win easily. Finally, Sasamiya and Kirin have good teamwork and have succeeded in suppressing their opponents. After that, Ayato, with Julie's, fought the 21st and 23rd ranked Jai Long Academy students. Ayato only uses ordinary weapons when the match starts and can only survive the opponent's attacks. The two of them launched an attack together to take down Ayato first. <laughs> Julie's split the battle arena in two with the wall of fire so that they could fight one on one. Even so, Ayato remained overwhelmed against it, but Julie still had other plans by opening the wall of fire so she could launch a surprise attack. Ayato and Julie's managed to win the match. After that, they acknowledged Ayato's greatness with Julie's and warned them to be careful against Lai Shenian with Lai Shenhua, because they own sly nature. Then they had a guest. She was named Flora, who was Julie's maid. Julie's says her goal is to get a lot of money for the orphanage and her kingdom can live in peace. To achieve this, she must win the Phoenix Festa event, as the competition organizers will grant the winner's wishes. While Ayato is still confused about what prize he will choose if he wins later, Julie's suggested that he choose information about Haruka to release his sealed power. Then Ayato contacted Irene at night. Ayato wanted Irene to convey a message to Eberween. Ayato wanted to ask about Haruka because Everween might know Haruka's whereabouts. The next day Julie's and Flora were having lunch at the cafe. Suddenly, a student at La Wolf Black Institute named Corona Kashimaru came. She asked Ayato to meet Everween. Ayato, along with Julie's, met Everween in the car. Ayato asked about Haruka, and Everween replied that he had seen Haruka as a participant at the Eclipse Fest match. It was a tournament like the Phoenix Festa, but more dangerous because the participants could kill each other. Eberween explained that someone had defeated Haruka, but Eberween confirmed that Haruka was still alive and her whereabouts had disappeared somewhere. Knowing about Haruka made Ayato not focus on doing the exercises. Julie's is worried about Ayato and asks Sasamiya to cheer on Ayato. Sasamiya meets Ayato and recalls their past when they fought Haruka. Ayato and Sasamiya work together to beat Haruka, even though their combination attack manages to corner Haruka. But Haruka shows her true power. In the end, they couldn't beat Haruka. After that, Sasamiya said she would help Ayato find Haruka so they could fight her again, hearing that made Ayato excited again. The next day, Ayato and Julie's discuss a plan to defeat Lai Shenian with Lai Shenhua. Three representatives have already qualified for the semifinals, including Kirin and Sasamiya. Ayato's match together Julie's against Lai Shenian with Lai Shenhua started. Ayato immediately released his sealed power and attacked them at close range. Shenian uses illusion techniques and creates fog to scatter explosive papers in the battle arena. Shenian also made a clone of himself to fight Hayato, while Shenhua used a vanishing technique to attack Julie's up close. <laughs> The cloning technique can overwhelm Ayato, and the match time has reached 5 minutes, so Ayato's power is sealed again. Shenian belittled and insulted the weakened Ayato. He also placed explosive papers around Ayato. The explosion badly injured Ayato. Julie's rushed to save him, but they couldn't escape the attack from Shenian. Julie said she would protect Ayato, but Ayato suddenly remembered his past, which triggered his power. Ayato asked Julie to buy time so that Ayato could break the existing seal inside his body. Julie strengthened her defenses to protect Ayato from Shenian's attack. However, Shenian, who used the illusion technique, managed to trick Julie into allowing Shenhua to attack her. Done. 
Shenyun was annoyed with Julie's because she still didn't give up. So Shenyun tied up Julie's and attacked her with explosive papers. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ayato gets the key to unlock the chains that bind him. Even though Ayato's power is still sealed, his strength has increased to level 2, and he can use full power for one hour. Ayato instantly used a secret technique called Banish Evil Spirits. With that, Ayato could see the explosive paper along with Shenhua. <laughs> Feeling that her attacks weren't working on Ayato, Shenyun attacked the helpless Julies instead. Ayato was irritated by the scheming nature of Shenyun, because of which Ayato destroyed all the attacks from Shenyun and beat him in the face until he fainted. <laughs> After the match, Claudia congratulated them for qualifying for the semifinals. Claudia invites Ayato to her room as a gift and wants to give a night service to Ayato, but Julie stops it because she wants to discuss strategies for the next match. Then the semifinal match, Kirin and Sasamiya will fight Artie with Rimsi. As usual, Artie will give his opponent one minute to launch an attack freely. However, Kirin launched a swift attack that Artie could not detect, so it managed to penetrate his armor. Since Kirin's attacks were so dangerous, Artie had no choice but to counterattack. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sasamiya also uses the strongest weapon she has to fight Rimsi. <laughs> Fighting between them, they are getting fiercer. Rimsi, with Sasamiya, exchanged powerful shots. Meanwhile, Kirin launched a series of attacks that cornered Artie. In the end, Kirin managed to hit Artie's right eye. <laughs> Artie finds it difficult to defeat Kirin and requests Rimsi use their secret technique. Rimsi refused that and focused on launching an attack on Sasamiya. Sasamiya combines her weapons to launch a powerful shot. At the last moment, Artie protects Rimsi with his shield so the body of Rimsi not be destroyed. Then they use a secret technique. Rimsi sheds all her gear to combine with Artie. Although the way of attack has not changed, the speed and strength have significantly increased. Even so, Sasamiya feels that Artie has a weakness, but whose information they know is too little, and Sasamiya needs time to prepare for her attack. Artie can withstand Kirin's attacks and respond by throwing Kirin into the corner of the arena. Even though Sasamiya managed to withstand Artie's attack, her weapon was damaged. <laughs> Kirin and Sasamiya didn't give up and continued to launch attacks until the match was over. In the end, Artie won the match, while Kirin and Sasamiya were seriously injured. Julie's promised Sasamiya she would beat Artie in the round finals later. Then suddenly, they got the news that Flora had been kidnapped, and the kidnapper contacted them. He would release Flora, provided that Ayato performs the sealing of Sir Veresta's weapon by force. If that was done, then Ayato couldn't use Sir Veresta anymore. Claudia confirmed that the mastermind of the kidnapping was Everween. Claudia has the plan to save Flora. She asks Kirin and Sasamiya to find a location hideaway kidnapper. Meanwhile, Ayato and Julie's will continue the match, but for now, Ayato must use ordinary weapons and hide Sir Veresta's weapons. The semifinal match second started. Ayato, along with Julie's, will fight Lemus with Forster. Lemus immediately used his full strength against Julie's, while Ayato against Foster. Ayato also praised the prowess of Foster's sword technique, but his sword was still too light. Because of that, Ayato could beat him easily. <laughs> Julie's continued to launch her fire attacks at Lemus. However, Lemus' armor protected him from fire but could not withstand high temperatures. So Lemus fought in his roasted state, and in the end, Julie's beat him. After the match, Ayato and Julie's wanted to find Flora's whereabouts, and Yabuki also helped them. 
On the other hand, Artie wants the wound in the eye is not fixed, as he felt the previous fight had taught him much. So he wants to let the wound in the right eye as evidence of progress. Ernesta also felt happy because her puppet could have feelings and thoughts almost like humans. Ayato meets Irene for information. Irene advises Ayato to look for the kidnapper's hideout in a place called Rotlicht. Ayato immediately headed there, but a group of people was chasing him. Then suddenly, a beautiful girl appears who wants to help Ayato. The girl takes Ayato to a safe place and manages to escape from the mafia. Even Ayato thanked her and wanted to leave immediately to continue the search. Then someone approached them. He immediately launched an attack on the girl, but the girl managed to beat him easily. Knowing Ayato is looking for someone, the girl intends to help Ayato. It turned out that the girl was Sylvia, a first-rank student at the Academy Queenvale and she is also a singer. Sylvia asked for information about Flora so she could look for her with her unique ability. After dispersing her power throughout the city, Sylvia found Flora's whereabouts. Then Ayato wanted to ask for Sylvia's phone number so he could contact her to thank her for her help. Sylvia happily gave it to him, and even Sylvia felt attracted to Ayato. Ayato immediately gave information on Flora's whereabouts to his friends. Kirin and Sasamiya ask Ayato and Julie's to prepare for the final match while they will save Flora. Yabuki Sasamiya and Kirin headed toward the venue. When they entered the place, they were blocked by shadow forces. Sasamiya launched an attack to destroy them all. However, the shadow always shows up. <laughs> Lester suddenly comes to their aid, and Kirin and Sasamiya can head over to place the kidnapper holding Flora hostage. On the other hand, the final round match is about to start, and Artie becomes even more excited to be able to fight against Ayato. Of course, both teams will use all their abilities to become winners. Ayato only uses ordinary weapons to attack, but Artie already knows Ayato's sword techniques. Ayato uses the power of awareness to control the movement of the entire arena. With that, Ayato can avoid attacks from Rimsi and focus on attacking Artie first. Artie's armor was unexpectedly able to withstand Julie's fire attacks. Therefore, they had to come up with a new strategy to defeat Artie. Artie and Rimsy were forced to use their ultimate move earlier because Ayato's ability with Julie's could not be underestimated. Ayato tried to stop it, but he could only destroy the possession badge Rimsy. Ultimately, the merging process finished, making it difficult for them because Ayato could only use ordinary weapons. <laughs> On the other hand, Kirin and Sasamiya manage to find Flora. The kidnapper uses shadow abilities. Knowing this, Sasamiya throws a flashbang to remove the shadow so Kirin can save Flora. The kidnapper didn't let them escape. He continued to attack Kirin. Kirin was seriously injured, but she used the ultimate technique, the illusion sword. <laughs> At the same time, Sasamiya carried out the last attack. They defeated the kidnapper and saved Flora. Ayato's attacks couldn't penetrate Artie's defense, so they could only defend and dodge the deadly attacks launched by Artie. While they were being cornered, Claudia suddenly burst into the commentator's room to let them know that Flora was safe. <laughs> Knowing this, Ayato immediately used his Sir Veresta weapon to counter Artie's attack. The successive attacks from Ayato and Julie's left Artie helpless, so he was forced to release all of his strength. With that power, Artie made the battle arena crumble, but he also received damage to his body. As Julie's could no longer fight, she channeled her power into Sir Veresta. It was unexpected that Sir Veresta's form could change according to Ayato's wish. The battle is still not over. Even though they are seriously injured, they still launch the best attack they have to win the match. <laughs> the 
In the end, the fight was won by Ayato. Ayato and Julie's officially won the Phoenix Festa and received an award from Media's Mesa. On the other hand, Yabuki is chasing after the previous kidnapper, who wants to run away. Yabuki is so strong that he can easily kill the kidnapper. Ayato and Julius meet Medias Mesa. He explains that the mastermind behind the kidnapping is the work of the mafia. Medias Mesa was covering up the truth, even though the mastermind behind Flora's kidnapping was Everween. Also, Medias Mesa had defeated Haruka, and he had hidden Haruka somewhere. Several days later, Julius took Ayato and the others to the Lisultania Kingdom. They were greeted with great fanfare because Julie's had won the Phoenix Festa. Then they met the older brother of Julie's, Jalbert, a king in the Lisultania kingdom. After dinner, Claudia asked them to join her for the Grips Festa. The participants who were going to participate in the match were powerful. Even so, Claudia was sure that if she teamed up with Ayato with the others, there would be a chance of winning. In the end, they finally accepted solicitation from Claudia. The next day they attended the welcoming ceremony. Ayato also praised Julie's beauty along with the others. Ayato was surprised because the event was so lively, even though Julie's family was short of money. Julie's explained that the Integrated Company Foundation had taken over the Lisultania Kingdom, so Julie's wasn't permitted to use their finances by them. Whereas Jalbert is a person who does not care about politics and just wants to have fun with lots of women. So he became the perfect puppet for the Integrated Company Foundation. While Ayato enjoyed the event with Kirin and Sasamiya, suddenly someone came to disturb them. He advises them not to join Claudia's team in the Grips Festa. Since Ayato rejected his suggestion, he directly summoned monsters to fight Ayato along with the others. Ayato tries to incapacitate the monster while Julie's and Sasamiya deal the finishing blows. Even though the monster was defeated, but the previous person had left there. They confirmed that the culprit who summoned the monsters earlier was a world-class criminal, and he was extremely dangerous. Jalbert wanted to discuss something with Ayato alongside Julie's. He asks Ayato to marry Julie's, otherwise, Julie's will be forced to marry an emissary from the Integrated Company Foundation. But Julie's was still shy and couldn't express her feelings to Ayato. Even Ayato did the same, so the talk about their marriage will resume sometime in the future. Jalbert also asked Julie's not to take part in the Grips Festa match. Julie's popularity increased drastically after winning the Phoenix Festa, so the Integrated Company Foundation would make her a queen in the Lisultania Kingdom if her popularity were to increase. If that happened, then Julie's life would suffer greatly. But Julie's refused that and would participate in the Grips Festa match. When Ayato with Julie's was strolling in the city, Julie's suddenly saw her childhood friend in the car. That's why Julie's immediately chased after her. That girl named Ophelia, a student of the Le Wolf Black Institute. Julie's asked her to return with her, but Ophelia refused, so they fought. <laughs> Even though Julie's continued to launch attacks, her attacks didn't work. In the end, Julie's and Ayato were poisoned. When Ophelia wanted to kill them, the previous villain named Gustave stopped her. Because Gustave had been tasked by someone to kill Ayato, he wanted Ophelia to hand them over to him. Eberwein also called out to her, so Ophelia left there. Ayato, who had been poisoned, made it difficult for him to fight against Gustave. Luckily Claudia saved them. Not wanting to find trouble with Claudia, Gustave left immediately. Ayato regained consciousness after three days of fainting. Julie's told him about her relationship with Ophelia. Ophelia is Julie's childhood friend. One day, the Integrated Company Foundation brought in Ophelia. A student of Alenkant known as Magnum Opus is researching to create an artificial genistella. And the person who was used as a research experiment was Ophelia. That's why Ophelia became the strongest strega in this world. But Ophelia became a different figure from before. After that, Gustave attacked the kingdom's capital to distract the security forces. At the same time, Gustave was in the sewage area. Knowing that, Julie's and Ayato immediately headed there. Gustave summoned Hydra monsters to fight them. Julie's immediately evacuates residents while Ayato fights the Hydra and is remotely assisted by Sasamiya. Ayato had to decapitate all of the Hydra's heads to defeat him, but Hydra's could regenerate quickly. 
When the Hydra's head remained one, Julius launched a powerful attack for annihilated the monster. On the other hand, Kirin meets Gustave, who is on top of the building. Kirin quickly catches Gustave. It is revealed that the mastermind who ordered Gustave was Claudia's father. He did it for Claudia's safety and advised her not to participate in the Grip's Festa. Claudia's dream is considered a threat in the future by Sadaukan's top officials. Therefore they intend to make Claudia an enemy of Sadaukan. The next day they will return to Sadaukan Academy. Before that, Julie's told her purpose. She was determined to win the Grip's Festa event to increase her kingdom's combat power. Ayato got a call from Media's Mesa. He said that he had managed to find Haruka. However, Haruka's body has been in suspended animation since five years ago. Haruka may have used her power on her body. Ayato, who is in despair, suddenly meets Magnum Opus. She says that she can heal Haruka. Magnum Opus will likely help Ayato if Ayato wins the Grips Festa match. And that is the end of the video. Remember to subscribe and like this video, so see you in the next video.